guys, welcome back. Um, so I've now fixed the seam on all of these textures here and I've laid them down in, uh, in Photoshop. So first of all I have the uh, wooden planks white wax um, texture. Then I have the height map. Um, then I have the uh, white cavity map. I have the sketch map. I have the uh, just plain white map. Then I have the ambient occlusion map and then I have the two normal maps. The first one, this one, is from ZBrush, and this one is from XNormal. Um, so, what we want to do now is we want to composite these layers, and um, there are different couple, a couple of different ways that you can do this. Um, I myself only recently started actually playing around with this with stylized textures created like this. Um, so I have already a set uh, way I did the last one I made. So I'm gonna follow the same. Um, Way I did that, and you can watch uh, watch with me how I did that. So uh, I started out with my white wax. I'm just gonna create a new layer, put it back here, and call this background. I'm gonna fill this layer in with just a very dark brown color like this. Um, the next thing I then did is uh, had this um, white wax map here. Um, this background map is just if if something didn't get rendered or maybe it was transparent or something like that then it would eventually just have a, a very dark brownish color in the background that's totally fine so I have my white wax here um, and then I want to put my height map on top of this uh, with a multiply effect uh, what this does is that it gives us a quite nice color variation um, effect and we probably want to set this as a, at a a little, little bit lower opacity, so let's say something like 75. Um, so it's not that drastic. Um, let's do it like let's do it like that. And let's see what do we then want. We went, then want the ambient occlusion map. So this is the ambient occlusion map that I created from ZBrush. I want to put this above the height map, and let's do a multiply effect on this this as well. And let's do this like 80% opacity. Uh, the next thing we then want is, um, let's see, I did uh, I did change the levels on the old one I made. Um, so you can see this is the old one I made. Then I have the ambient occlusion lab here and I did change the levels to make it uh, lighter. So we can do that as well. If we click this occlusion layer and we come down to our layer masks down here, I don't really know what it's called, but yeah. And then we go to uh, levels, and you can see that now this one is above the ambient occlusion. And if we select this and hold down the Alt button and come to the gap between these two layers, we have a an arrow pointing down towards the the layer below it. And if we then if we then click, then this layer is now masked to this layer, or this effect is now masked to this layer. So we can now choose the layer. Um, this, uh, this, uh, what you, I don't know what you call it, but we can now tweak this layer and it will only affect this, uh, this down here. So we can now make it darker, we can make it lighter, we can do whatever we want with it. So let's just make it a little bit lighter, like this. I think this is okay for now. So the next thing I want to put in there is the, um, after the MB occlusion, I have the AO from. X, uh, from X normal, so this is the uh, this is then the ambient occlusion from from the from ZBrush. I apparently last time I rendered this one out and I used it, but it doesn't seem like it. Uh, it doesn't really put a lot in there. So let's see. We can then put our sketch map in. So the sketch map goes here, and for this one I'm going to change the levels as well for this layer. So I'm going to do the same as I did before. So, and I'm actually also going to desaturate this. So I'm go also going to choose hue and saturation. And I'm going to pull the saturation all the way down. And then I'm going to tweak the levels of this layer so that I only have the, uh, basically every everything should be black apart from the, um, the, uh, the highlights of the nails, for example, or the highlights of the wood. Um, 
is, is what I want to be white on this map here. So something like this is probably going to be okay. So in this case, I'm just going to click. Uh, I'm, I'm done with this. So I'm going to select this layer and then I'm going to choose a screen effect. Um, as you can see, it really pops out the highlights of the nails and the wood. Um, I think I do need to change it a little bit. I probably want a little darker. I want, don't want, really want the highlights of the wood to be this shiny. Um, so maybe something like this is better. And I can then also go into my eraser tool. Whoop. There we go. And I can erase these if I don't really want these to be there. Um, I guess I don't, but uh, I'm just, I'm just going to let them be for now. Um, the next thing I want to put in there is probably my uh, white cavity and my white maps. So let's see where I've put these. Um, I have my sketch map and then I have my... I have, actually have another sketch map on top of this uh, because I wanted to do something some other effects as well. And let's see... Okay, so I, di I, I didn't actually use my white maps last time, so let's just get rid of these. And let's just keep it like this. Uh, the next thing I then did was... Uh, let's just quickly do this. We're gonna, just going to put this in a folder. I'm going to call this lighting. And on top of these layers, I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this uh, shadows. I'm going to call this, create a new layer, call this lighting normals and shadows normals. And what I can then use the normal map for, if I check on the normal map, as you can see, there are some different colors that are hitting uh, certain um, uh, normals here. So we can then use this information to put in some shadow and and uh, lighting information as well. So if we if we for example select um, a color range here, and we choose a color that's mainly on the on this side, if you imagine the light source coming from from top left and going down here. We can select this uh, color here, and you can see it selects, depending on your fuzziness, it selects a wider range of colors. So let's do something like this. You can, see, you can see now it has selected all of these pixels here. And we can use this for if we take a rather dark color here. Let's do something like, uh, let's see for a dark color like this one. We can put this in our shadows layer. And we can then put a multiplier on that. Uh, actually, this is probably where we want the lighting information to go. So I'm just, just going to control C this. I'm going to come here. I'm going to change it to a lighter color. So I'm just going to pick this one. Go here. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to choose this as a screen effect, like so. So now we have this effect going. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take on the normal map, normal map again. I'm going to select the new color range. This time I'm going to select a color on the other side of the wood. Something like this. Maybe with a little bit more fuzziness. So something like that. And then I'm going to choose a um, different color for this. So let's just choose normal for this again. And let's see what we can find. Let's do a color like this one. Paste that in there. And then put it on multiply. So now that we have now we have this going. Um, actually I'm probably just gonna use flat grey colors colors. So let's get the selection back. I'm gonna paste this one in instead. I'm going to choose multiply for this, and for this I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to deselect this, I'm just going to select the pixels that I chose here, choose a lighter color, paste that in there. So we have this going now. Um, I'm then going to lower the opacity for this, 
maybe down to something low like 30%. Let's just see how that looks. So 30%. So it just gives us a, it gives us a little bit more lighting information. Um, so that we can use this. Um, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this color. And I'm going to choose to create a new layer inside of here. Uh, now I'm going to take this color that I chose for my other project. Um, so let's see. I don't really want to see the lighting. I only just want to see the color of this layer. So I'm going to grab this. This color is uh, 153 in the red channel and in the green channel is 100, 108 in the blue channel it's uh, 74 so you can find this color I'm just gonna paste this color in here and I'm gonna choose an overlay uh, layer style so that we have this now <coughs> the thing that happens when you do this is of course that it also changes the color of the nails um, you can easily fix this by choosing your eraser tool and just erasing where you don't want the color to be on this layer. So in this case, you just want to erase all of this on all of the nails, so you're left with the gray color from below. So this this is the part uh, of creating this texture that is kind of tedious, but it does add some very nice details to your textures, um, especially if you get the sketch map in there and you get the highlights on the in the middle like this. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm probably just gonna pause the video while I'm doing this uh, because this is really not something that you guys need to see. It's just using the eraser tool to to remove the color information from the nails um, and leave you with the um, the gray color for the battle. You can of course also after you've done them you, after you're done with this you can add a different color to the metal if you if you desire. Um, but I'm just gonna keep a grayish color like this, um, and then I'm probably gonna play with the normal, uh, not the normals, but the uh, the hue and saturation of this layer. Um, maybe even use colorize and see if I can find a different color that looks more intriguing. Um, maybe I'm maybe I like it more dark. Um, this wood looks kind of kind of bright. So, but I'm I'm gonna pause the video and then I'm gonna come back when I've when I'm done erasing all of the color information from these nails and see you guys then.